Alisa is a Polk heavy character that takes very little risks, can easily get in and get out, can control the pace of the match having one of the best movement in the game only second to Lily and not only that she also has the best stance in the game that allows her to deal some insane amount of pressure and cheap damage as well. Hey guys gamer name here and in this guide we're gonna talk about Alisa's most important tools, how to use these tools, in what scenarios you want to use these tools and just some overall tips, tricks and tech revolving around Alisa's strongest moves. So if you love Alisa then you clicked on the right video. So sit down, relax, boot up your game and let's jump right into it. Okay, so let's start this guide off by looking at Alisa's back one, which is a 15 frame poke that's minus 5 on block and plus 8 on hit. And Alisa is a very poke heavy character, so you're gonna see a lot of moves like this going forward. She has quite a number of good pokes, which just fits into her archetype. Best way I can describe this move is, think of it like a 15 frame down forward one that leaves you in crouch. It's basically used to check the opponent and make reads off of what they do. So you only just check them and then see how they react, then make decisions based off of that the next time you throw it back one again. So on block, it's minus five, as I said earlier, and Alisa has one of the best movement in the game. Second, only to Lily. So after back one, you can still sidestep every option they throw out afterwards, apart from home moves, of course. So you can easily step jabs, you can easily step a down forward one as well. So it's a very, very good move. Back one, sidestep, right? Back one, sidestep. And not every character can sidestep cleanly after minus five on block, but this is Alisa we're talking about. She has a very good sidestep. Like a sidestep is ridiculously strong. So back one, sidestep is a very good option that you should consider most of the times when you throw out a back one. But if you want to stay offensive after back one on block at minus five, you do have quite a number of options. However, it is kind of a rock, paper, scissors situation. So for example, like I said, back one leaves you into full crouch. So Alisa has a very good law, full crouch down one plus two, which I'll cover later in the video. This law goes under highs. So if your opponent jabs after back one, your law will go right under their jab. So it's a very good option after that. However, if they throw out a down forward one, this will beat your law. So to beat that down forward one, you will have to sidestep. So this is why I said it's kind of a rock, paper, scissors situation. Down forward one from the opponent after you throw out a back one will beat every single option that you have after back one. So let's say you do back one into our standing four. If you throw out jabs or a down forward one, you will lose because again, minus five, right? So that's the whole idea behind this move on block. It's rock, paper, scissors. Sidestep to beat their jabs or like their down forward one checks or whatever they throw out that isn't a homing move. If they're throwing out a lot of jabs after your back one on block go for the down one plus two low to beat their jabs if you're throwing down forward one again sidestep right that's the idea behind the back one on block if you space back one on block as well you can create a very good whiff opportunity for yourself it creates a very good space like if you just do it at a, at a certain distance you create this space right sometimes the opponent won't be aware of this and they throw out a random button like a down forward one they completely whiff and you can punish them right after that so spacing when you in back one is very important as well with Alisa. Now, on hit, back one is very strong. Honestly, you want to learn this move on hit more than anything because it's plus eight on hit. And plus eight, they cannot sidestep, they cannot power crash, they have to take the mix up. So, classic flow chart, of course, is back one on hit into our standing four. You know, classic Alisa. And like I said, she also has that full crouch low. On hit at plus eight, most of the time your opponent will respect you. So this gives you the freedom to go for your full crouch mix up. She, she also has all standing one plus two, which is a safe homing mid that knocks down, guaranteeing you a follow up. I'll also cover this in the video. It has its own section, so don't you worry about that. So back one on hit, you can go for the full crouch low or the Austin 1 plus 2 mix up. You can also go for the back 1 plus 2 grab, which is a very strong da uh, very strong throw, 45 damage. As we all know, throws are really, really strong in this game. And if they keep respecting you, that gives you the leeway to start going in now. Like back 1 on hit, boom, into a running 2. Back 1 on hit, one running 3, 4. You know, back 1 on hit into flight mix up, stuff like that. If they're respecting you after back 1 on hit, keep the offense going, keep the pressure going. Are they mashing buttons after back 1 on 
one hit you can do a standing one and after one go standing four if you want she doesn't really have like a strong full crouch counter it too that could have been perfect for this situation but of course like i said she is a poke heavy character and some frame traps for back one or basically setups you want to use for back one is stuff like all standing four is plus five so all standing four into back one is a very good frame trap one one a 10 frame punisher on hit into back one again is a very strong frame trap you have running two which is plus five and back one is 15 frames like i said so running two into back one of course you will trade with jab as a trade in your favor you will do more damage down forward one as well into back one just a prime example of some good frame traps to throw out for back one in general again guys it's a down forward one that leaves you in full crouch the decisions you make after back one depends on the opponent's habits after you throw out this move make decisions based off of what they do that's basically back one in a nutshell one of alisa's strongest pokes for sure next up is her actual down forward one which is minus six on block now there are better down forward ones out there most of them being minus three on block but it'll make sense as to just why her down forward one is minus six her down forward one is also plus five on hit so plus five on hit pretty good her down forward one has extensions it has down forward one four which is mid mid however this second mid is unsafe at minus 11 so it can be jab punished but what makes the second hit good is the fact that it does give you plus 13 on counter it giving you a guaranteed 3-2 which can take you into hit. So this is the main reason as to why you are going to be throwing out some down forward 1-4s once in a while despite it being unsafe. She also has a down forward 1-1 one, one extension. So this one is high high. So there's a mix up between the mid and the high. It's also plus 1 on block. So basically the reward you get for using this move and plus 8 on hit which is amazing if you catch the mashing which is pretty good so this down forward one one also has another extension so down forward one one two with the chainsaw follow up at the end so it's mid high high the second chainsaw is also a high as well but on block this gives you plus six and leaves you in chainsaw stance which is amazing i'll break down alisa's chainsaw stance as well one of the best dancers in the game so i got you covered this is where the mind games come into play with down forward one it's all about mental frames and the mix-ups so you can think of down forward one on its own as a very good poke as usual down forward one made for reading what is your opponent doing after that make decisions based off of that and at minus six on block you can still move because you know alisa and minus six is not that bad so you can still move and sidestep afterwards but what makes it scary is or are the follow-up down forward one four we've spoken about that it has a follow-up so your opponent sometimes won't press buttons because they're expecting this second hit they are looking to punish this move so if the opponent keeps blocking that means you can still keep your pressure going or your offense going down forward one down forward one again down forward one back one down forward one maybe go for a running two down forward one go low down forward one grab down forward one keep your pressure going this depends on if the opponent is not pressing buttons after your first down forward one so again you have to make those reads you have to study your opponent's habits if they are pressing buttons down forward one four is a very good option or down forward one one if you want more plus frames instead of going into hit so down forward one one you know plus one on block can still keep your pressure going jab afterwards a very good frame traps because you're plus one and at plus eight like again plus eight is like the the perfect spot in terms of plus frames where your opponent can step they can't press buttons they can't activate a power crash very very strong so down forward one one if your opponent is caught machine gives you plus eight you can go have good follow-ups such as back one four for a counter edge frame trap down forward one down forward two as well for the launch go for another down forward one check to start to, to begin the loop all over again you can go low like plus eight guys go crazy however keep in mind down forward one one is a high it can be ducked and it can be launched if the second hit of down forward one one hits or lands the follow-up is guaranteed down forward one one two which leads you into destruction stance or her chains or stance so if you are sure that your opponent is going to mash buttons after down forward one one then just do the entire string down forward one one two go to go into destruction stance and this leaves you at plus eight on hit in destruction stance however there is some pushback so you won't really have like as strong frame traps as you would if they were right 
in your face so this is the versatility and the mind games that go into down forward one so very different from back one remember back one is the down forward one that leaves you into crouch then her regular down forward one is different in a sense that it has follow-ups that open up a can of mind games and mental frame mix-ups as well so this is basically the 101 on how you use down forward one nothing too complicated it's all about reads and all about decisions based on what your opponent does Next up is Alisa's down forward 2. So this is a natural launcher or normal hit. However, it does not launch crouching opponents and it's only minus 8 on block. So it's completely safe. Now down forward 2s are generally used the same. Characters such as Law, Lee, Shaheen, etc. The down forward 2s are basically used the same and in the same purpose. These moves are still overpowered in my opinion. Like natural launcher down forward 2s are just so strong. So these moves are insane good for keep out an opponent is in your face just a down forward too however you are at risk of getting sidestepped keep that in mind but like dude these things are just so good like the risk and reward the reward is worth the risk in my opinion this is especially good against opponents that love non-committal sidestep like sidestep checks so let's say like a one jab sidestep one jab sidestep one jab or like a one jab sidestep down for a two sidestep check stuff like that if they don't commit to a sidestep they actually don't have a read on you they just want to sidestep and throw out something down for twos are very good at negating that kind of pressure right the law is in your face one sidestep down forward one sidestep hammer sidestep low that kind of thing just throw out that down forward two brother to shut them right off so people become very cautious against characters that have no more launching down forward twos because even just dashing in your opponent's face an opponent an opponent won't just dash without a plan in your face because of that down forward two it's a very very strong tool i'm sure you guys that face characters like warang know exactly what i'm talking about you just randomly run into down forward two and that's exactly the case with alisa although it's one frame slow at 12 frames sorry at 16 frames it basically serves the same purpose so that's why i've added down forward two in this section very overpowered guys use your down forward twos as a zoning tool and just for keep out Alisa's 4 is one of her best moves and just one of the best moves in Tekken 8 in general. This is a 13 frame homing high that's only minus 5 on block and has some really good pushback dude. Like it's so strong. It's also plus 14 on hit. Plus 14! plus 14 that's really strong although it does have some really strong pushback as well on hit so i will give it that so kind of think of it like gene standing for which one is better honestly it's very debatable but i think alisa standing for is the better version it gives a guaranteed rocket punch follow up on counter hit or guaranteed down three if you want so standing four is used in many different ways it's used as a panic move it can be used for very strong frame traps or setups to get the counter hit for the knockdown and you can just throw it out as well like throwing it out for keep out like a down four two and of course being a homing move you want to use it as a tracking move against your opponent so on hit like i said it's plus 14 and because it has some massive pushback you can't really take advantage of those plus frames you do have some good options like back three but back three does hit as a frame trap but if they back dash sometimes they can, they can get out of range and you might end up whiffing and getting punished for that so four on hit is basically used to set up pressure so let's say four on hit and they're plus 14 and at plus 14 no one is pressing buttons like no one is pressing buttons unless maybe they do like a yolo hit smash or like a power crash or hit burst right so for that you have moves like up back two which is a chainsaw move that takes her into hit i'll explain i'll talk about this move later you can do back three like i said earlier you can do four then four again right but this all depends on if they press buttons after four on hit because like i said because of the pushback if they just back dash out of range and you do four on hit into another four you end up whiffing and you end up getting punished so again it's about reads are they disrespecting your plus 14s then yeah bait them four into four four into running two four into back three right four into back one four into jabs as well that's basically the idea however if they're respecting your four on hit this gives you insane priority and like the, the the pressure you can implement after this is ridiculous you can go like four into running two i spoke about that four into running three running three four four into forward forward four four into down three which is her long range low down three i'll talk about it later as well so basically 
at plus 14 guys go crazy use your imagination because plus 14 is a lot and alisa actually thrives at this range like range 2 range 2.5 because of the moves most of the moves that she has cover a lot of space like flight right you can do four into flight mix-ups flight two flight three flight one plus two etc etc like on on hit guys it's so amazing plus 14 is a lot and the pushback is just a bonus for alisa because that's the range that she, that's the range that she actually thrives and the range that she likes now on block on block or block is so good it's so good because at minus five guys you can still sidestep so you're throwing out a move that's 13 frames fast it's safe it's a high and it gives a counter it knockdown for a follow-up but you can still move on block after throwing it out Jin can't move after standing four right he basically has to block afterwards but alisa can still move she can still sidestep she can do stuff like power crash and hit burst afterwards it's really strong and it also da does have some pushback on block as well so you can do like standing four then just see what the opponent does most people love to jab after this but like i said because of the pushback you know you can actually bait those jabs so you can do like a standing four then back dash and duck then punish their jabs as well, right? You can do four, sidestep, and punish whatever they throw out afterwards. Standing four into power crash, right? Standing four into up back two. Standing four into jab. They can come running at you after you throw out a four because they know there's so much pushback after the standing four, right? So you can do four into jab to interrupt their pressure or to interrupt them running at you. You can do standing four into down four two, guys. Down four two. If they're running towards you, they will go right into the down four two. They have to be very how to be very very careful like alisa is very strong at controlling space because of her movement movement is her bnb and this is how you must get the best out of this character when it comes to movement standing four move around and see what they do okay respecting me okay standing four into running two standing four into back three standing four into running two right standing four dash up back one they're respecting you keep going in plus negative five is nothing guys it's basically you can basically still do a lot after minus five so this is what makes standing four very very strong like it's an amazing tool i wish my mains had this kind of tool guys it is so strong and of course being a counter knockdown in 13 frames you obviously want some really good frame traps and setups for this so for example one one on hit her 10 frame punisher again is plus five on hit so one one followed up by standing four is a very good frame trap they press buttons they get counter hit but they can duck again it's a high so you have to be very careful right full crouch full crouch down one plus two we spoke about hello earlier it's plus five as well so four is a very strong follow-up down forward one is plus five as well four is a very good follow-up after that forward two on hit four is a very strong follow-up so it's a lot running two running two as well is plus five four is a strong frame trap of strong setup 13 frames guys is a lot you can do a lot for 13 frames in terms of frame traps and setups one of the best tools in the game maybe even a top five best move in taken like it's so strong guys use your standing fours alisa's tracking is one of the best in the game as well so characters that step a lot like zafina or alisa miras yeah in terms of homie moves you are more than covered very very strong move Alisa's forward 2 is another of her amazing pokes. It kind of works the same way as down forward 1 because it has follow-ups as well and the frame data is almost the same. Best way I could describe this move is a down forward 1 that is slower but has better frame data than her actual down forward 1. So it's only minus 4 on block and it's plus 7 on hit. So minus 4 on block again like I've said in the down forward 1 section you can still move around afterwards. So everything I said about down forward one on block applies to forward two as well so please go back to the down forward one section do not repeat myself too much or cause repetitiveness and make the guide extra longer than i already want it to be and plus seven as well is just one frame away from plus eight which is as i say the sweet spot of an opponent not being able to sidestep or like power crash and stuff like that so plus seven is really strong very good frame traps including back one afterwards down forward one down forward two as well four for the frame trap counter it set up plus seven guys go crazy i've talked about this throughout the video i don't want to be too repetitive now the thing about forward 2 is just like down forward 1 it does have some really good extensions which you can use as mix up so for starters forward 2 1 goes into destruction stance and it's a hit engager as well so forward 2 1 however is unsafe at minus 10 which isn't really too bad honestly it is a mid mid so if they mash butters after a forward 2 
they get hit and you go into heat that makes this that's one of the reasons what, why this poke is so strong. Not just that, she also has another extension after 4 2. She has 4 2 3 3, which is a mid high mid string. So, mid high, second hit can be ducked, you have to be careful. And the last hit is also unsafe at minus 10. So, now you have a mix up between 4 2 1, which is mid mid, takes you into hit, unsafe at minus 10, or 4 3, which is mid high. The high is safe, they don't duck, but the last hit, the third hit, is minus 10, which again isn't too bad so you have a really good mix up here and forward two three three is a very good string it's very valuable at the wall because again it does go splat if they mash button that's one layer of mix ups that she has from forward two the best part about this this poke is forward two one plus two can take you into destruction stance like this is very strong and this is the main reason as to why people tend to mash after forward two because now alisa gets to get in for free and having alisa in an opponent's face in chase or stance yeah they don't want that shit it's just too broken she's just too strong so if you do forward two and then don't mash buttons, you can press one plus two and go into chainsaw stance. And a really good trick about this, if, if you do forward two into chainsaw stance two, which is a safe mid launcher, this launcher actually goes under highs. If they jab, you go right under their jabs, you get a launcher for free. So another layer of mix-ups from forward two. And not just that, you can also do the same thing with chainsaw stance down one. So forward two, one plus two, into down one again if they jab you go right under their jabs another layer of mix-ups if you do forward two most opponents like checking you with down forward one but at the end of the day again guys it's all about mix-ups sometimes the opponent will mash after forward two sometimes the opponent will duck sometimes the opponent will try to sidestep or move around sometimes they'll just respect you so again it's about reads look at what they or try to read what the opponent does after forward two right forward two move around if they do a down forward one you can easily sidestep that even the jabs right if you don't want to go for like chainsaw Two or chainsaw down one you want to stay in neutral just forward two inside step you can still beat their jabs you can still beat their down forward ones as well so now you see why i said forward two is kind of the same as her down forward one mix-up game the only difference is going into chainsaw stance with forward two is a little bit more safer than down forward one one two because the last two hits of that string are highs right so but with alisa it's either they press buttons or they don't and forward two into chainsaw stance is actually safe alisa can actually block in this stance even if they jab and you go into chainsaw, st chainsaw stance after forward two you are still safe it is so strong one of the best ways to go into her distraction stance or her chainsaw stance she can still sidestep even in distraction stance so it's so strong you can do forward two and not go into chainsaw stance and still sidestep afterwards for like a down forward two or like a four punish or like a jab punish or if you want you can do forward two one plus two go into chainsaw stance and still sidestep afterwards you can do forward two into chainsaw stance into chainsaw power crush again if they're mashing buttons or being too aggressive like the layer of mix-ups from this are insane and you're actually still safe the only downside is forward two is a little bit too slow at 17 frames and the tracking isn't really that good and the range again is not that great as well but for two guys is amazing is amazing again being able to go into chainsaw stance for free or being safe is so strong especially in heat as i'll talk about later in the video so these are like the best scenarios in which you want to use your forward to to really just get in being 17 frames again you don't really have like that many frame traps to throw it out it's basically used to initiate your pressure right jab game jab 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 down forward one boom forward two now you're in a mix-up situation for a two side step for two jabs for two chains or down one for two chains or two everything i've talked about it's an amazing poke guys and again this fits in right into her archetype as being a poke heavy character for a two falls right into that a very very strong two back three is alisa's big homing move it comes out at 20 frames which is a little bit too slow but it's a mid and it's only minus eight on block with some decent pushback now this mid just feels good to use it has some good range and it's a very chunky hitting mid right sends the opponent flying which is very very good because alisa wants to have this space between her or this range where she can just go in with stuff like flights and running twos so opponents sometimes tend to duck so you can do stuff like dash in into back three as well now this is primarily used as a mix-up for her standing four Remember, her standing four is a, is a homing move as well. However, it is a high. 
It comes out faster of course at 13 frames, but mixing this up with the mid is still a very viable strategy. It's just a chunky mid guys, 20 frames slow. If your opponent is stepping a lot, it's very good to throw out some back threes. It's especially good as well at the wall. You don't really have like really good setups or like frame traps and stuff like that. It's basically used to just throw out and stop your opponent moving. It's a very chunky hit and a very strong mix up to stand in four. But four of course is a better option amongst the two. But just to stop them ducking randomly, back three will be that mid for you. So just get in and throw out a back three. But be careful not to whiff this because it has some insane whiff recovery. So if you if you whiff this, you're dead. Okay, do not whiff back threes. So back three again, very strong mid. Next up is her down forward four, which is perhaps one of her most underrated moves. This move is godlike, especially on Alisa. It's a 12 frame poke that's only minus seven on block and does some massive pushback on block. 12 frame poke, guys, is ridiculous. And what makes this mid so good is the space that it creates for Alisa. It has massive pushback. It's a very good defensive tool. Like, Alisa is all about movement. Like, this gets you out of the opponent's pressure it creates that space and it creates that perfect space that alisa wants to be in like a single down forward four into backdash puts alisa at that range her favorite range right in range of that down three that flight that running two that running three four that's what down forward four is all about it looks very simple and you might quickly ignore this move but at high level top level players spam the hell out of this move guys it's so good like if you play alisa you won't really feel as well, you're getting pressured a lot with this character because her movement is very scary. First of all, opponents don't just go rushing in against Alisa. They have to be very careful. And even if the opponent is in your face, a simple down forward four can create that space for you to just back up and still sidestep afterwards. It is so strong. So most of the times you're moving around, right? Or yeah, your back is against the wall in terms of pressure, right? Your opponent is being too aggressive. Throw out a down forward four, create that space and just back up, right? Create that space, back away, stay safe. If the opponent is not pressing buttons after your down forward four sometimes, it's very good to just keep going in. So you do like a down forward four, create that space. You think you're going to back out, but you go right back in with a running two, right? Or mix it up with a running three. Create that space. Are they still being defensive? Down forward four. Are they still being defensive? Go in with a flight. Mix up, right? That's the idea. Down forward four. Are they rushing into you? That now means you can throw out stuff like down forward twos. Talk about down forward twos before in the previous section how it's very strong in terms of keep out. An opponent just can't come running towards you. So you can do like a down forward four into a down forward two, right? They come running into you. They get launched. Down forward four into four. They can get counted by the magic four. So stuff like that, guys. Again, it's about reads. What are they doing after your down forward four and make decisions based off of that? You can even do like down forward four into a power crash, but mostly it's about creating space and, you know, waiting for that whiff, creating that whiff opportunity for yourself. Because man, down forward four, guys, the fact that it's 12 frames fast, 12 frames, it's kind of like things back four. However, things back four is mostly used for you know, tracking, it does create that space as well, but not as much as Alisa, bro. Like, Alisa just, she basically has a get out of jail free card, right? Plus frames, you poke her, she throws out a down forward four, she's already out of range, I have to go back in against her. It is so annoying to deal with, but it's, it is kind of linear, it can be stepped, so you should be very careful, but overall, one of her best moves, top five best Alisa moves, guys, without a doubt, it is so strong. Use your down forward four to create space and with opportunities for yourself. Next up is Alisa's up forward 2, which is a 16 frame homing high that's only minus 2 on block and takes her into hit. This is another amazing tool. And just like forward 2, 1 plus 2, it's her fastest way to go into her chainsaw stance or her distraction stance. Like this is so strong. And unlike forward 2, 1 plus 2, there are no mix up involved, there are no other string options. You just basically throw it out and go into hit. So Alisa has three very strong homing moves. Right, she has standing four, she has back three, and up forward two as well. Honestly, like her homing properties are just very strong. Like you can't just move around aimlessly against Alisa because her tracking, dude, her tracking is very good. Going into chainsaw stance at minus two, guys. At minus two, 
that is very strong you're still safe the only risk here is that the move is a high so it can be ducked but the opponent has to anticipate that but overall it is still very strong and being minus two on block of course you can still sidestep afterwards and remember i said earlier alisa has a normal sidestep whilst in destruction stance or a chainsaw stance and she also has her command sidestep which is down or up three plus four when in chainsaw stance so like up forward two into sidestep will always be a strong option and not just the normal side step the manual input side step as well is a very strong option this will beat jabs this will be the down forward one basically anything that is not a homing property or a homing move as well will lose to this and just like forward to one plus two you do have the same mix-ups of down one and standing two as well whilst in chainsaw stance down one will go under jabs chainsaw stance two will also go under jabs as well so basically everything i said about forward two one plus two forward two into chainsaw stance basically applies to up forward two as well all the principles i said about going into chainsaw stance after forward to one plus two applies to up forward two as well guys so please go back to that section if you're using the timestamp and skip to this section it's basically just the same thing i don't want to be repetitive as i'm saying as i keep saying in the video so this is a very strong tool so for frame traps and setups honestly you have way better options to use than up forward two like i said it's 16 frames so you're better off using stuff like standing four because at least standing four can give that counter it knockdown for a guaranteed follow-up whilst up forward two just takes you into heat but you can use it in frame trap situations if you want right forward two is plus seven like i said earlier so you can do forward two into up forward two as well if if they press buttons they get hit as long as it's not a law you can go like running two into up forward two if you think they're going to sidestep of course you want to catch them sidestepping with this up forward two that's the most important part but overall you won't really have like really strong frame traps and setups because you want to use it just as a tracking move you have way better options to use as a frame trap than up forward two so again very strong two guys implement this in your game plan as well while standing one plus two is another of Alisa's strong homie moves, but this one comes out from while standing. It comes out at 28 frames and is minus four on block. It gives you a knockdown for a guaranteed down three. She actually has another version of this. If she holds it, it comes out slower at about 36 frames and the frame data is way better. It becomes zero on block. But I'm sure you guys have noticed a trend with some of these Alisa's moves. Most of them are like basically minus five and below, right? Minus five, minus four. So you can still sidestep afterwards, you can still move afterwards. And even if you hold it, we're giving you zero on block. It's basically still the same, but like zero is way better because it's neutral. But even just a minus four on its own is enough. Now this one won't be used mostly as a tracking move like your other options, standing four, up forward two, back three. This one is mostly used as a full crouch mix-up. So Alisa also has a very strong low from full crouch. She has full crouch down one plus two. And this is the reason why one plus two is going to be used as a mix-up. These two are basically best friends, yin and yang. Whenever you're in crouch, the opponent is going to duck because of this particular low it's one of our best lows actually gives us some really good frame data as well it's only minus 12 on block and it's plus 5 on hit and not only that it can also take you into distraction stance or a chainsaw stance if you press 1 plus 2 again so now you're plus 5 in your opponent's face in chainsaw stance that is insanely strong and your opponents don't want to be in this situation so you find yourself you find your, your opponent actually ducking more than they want to when Alisa is in full crouch. Being a low that comes out from full crouch, you first want to look for situations that easily put you in full crouch. And we've spoken about one of them, back one. Remember, back one puts you in full crouch. So back one into a full crouch mix-up is very viable, very strong. If your opponent respects you after back one, of course. You also have down back three, which is a low we'll talk about later in the video, but it leaves you in full crouch, of course. So you can go for the outstanding mix-up as well between the low and the outstanding one plus two you also have her flight cancels so if you go three plus four then you hold down you can cancel the flight into full crouch i will talk about this as well but overall alisa doesn't really have that many options that leave her in full crouch most of the times you have to get on your opponent's face duck and enforce the full crouch mix up so when down one plus two hits of course you are at plus five and you have so many options after this at plus five 
Of course, standing for being 13 frames is a go to frame trap. Being 13 frames and a homing move as well is very strong after this situation because opponents tend to sidestep a lot after this. So it's a good way to track them and just stop them from moving around. And of course, being 13 frames, if they press buttons, they get counted for a guaranteed follow up. That's if you don't go into chainsaw stance. If you decide to go into a chainsaw stance, the best options you have to stop the opponents from stepping are either chainsaw 1 plus 2, which is another high homing move, but this one is safe as well, or her chainsaw forward 1, which is a 11 frame check or very strong poke. This one has a very active hitbox and actually has decent tracking as well, so it does clip them most of the times. So if you start mashing buttons after your full crouch down 1 plus 2, your go to frame trap is going to be her chainsaw 1, which does some massive damage and is safe at minus 9. And on hit, you get you actually get a guaranteed forward 3 plus 4, 1 plus 2. So your opponent does not want to press buttons after you do this, right? The best option your opponent has is mostly sidestepping after this. Again, if they respect you, Alyssa has very strong laws from her chainsaw stance. She has chainsaw stance down one we talked about and her chainsaw stance down two. I'll break all this down in her distraction stance section so please look forward to that so that's basically the premise you have after down one plus two on hit it's either you decide to go into chest stance or you don't if you stay in neutral check them with a four for the front of the press buttons or try to sidestep if they duck check them with a back one check them with a back three right they respect you go into a running two go into a running three and stuff like that However, I do advise mostly going into her chainsaw stance after down 1 plus 2 because this is where most of her strongest tools is. This is where her strongest offense is as well. Go into chainsaw stance, go for the low or the mid mix-up. If, ste if they're stepping a lot, go for the homing move mix-up. But again, what's 1 plus 2 is only minus 4. So she has a full crouch mix-up. If you block the mid, she can still sidestep afterwards. She doesn't give up her turn after going for what's 1 plus 2, which is just ridiculous, right? Alisa being the movement god of this game she can enforce a full rush mix up on you and still move afterwards that's her movement this is alisa so in this case like i said guys just try to find yourself in, in situations where you duck in your opponent's face and try by all means to enforce the mix up both are very strong options do some really good damage get a free knockdown for a guaranteed follow-up or go for the law that gives you plus five it can take you into destruction stance very very strong mix-up too despite alisa not being a mix-up type archetype she does have like mini mix-ups but it's still a very good way to mix up your opponent and get some damage off so throughout this video i have mentioned that alisa can easily get in and get out and she's very strong as well at max range like range 2 range 2.5 as well and this is where moves like running 2 come into place running 2 is basically a road a claudio running 2 it's a running move that's plus 5 on block which is very good but it is a high just like claudio running 2 so you have to be very very careful when it comes to using this move this is where the risk factor also comes into play when playing alisa like you only take risks with alisa start throwing out moves like running two high risk high reward but it's still a strong move nonetheless i'm sure you guys are familiar with claudia running two and how strong this move is you can also go into chains or stance on block by pressing one plus two after the running two lands you actually have to commit to this but it's actually still very good because of course you want you always want to be in chains or stance as much as you can on hit it guarantees a one plus two if you don't go into chains or stance however However, if you do decide to go into chase stars after running two you can get a guaranteed back one plus two which is a power crash that hits grounded as well so pretty pretty strong now i don't really have like that many tips on using this move honestly you just go in with a running two but the biggest issue alisa mains do with this move is being too predictable using it at max range like you see analisa running at you she most likely is going to go for a running two so you don't have to be very predictable when using this move one of the biggest weaknesses of running two apart from being a high of course is it's very susceptible to jabs it can be floated by jabs like one jab or just jabs at somewhere mid-range is very effective against alisa so as an alisa player you should be very aware about this weakness you should always be looking for that one jab and there are many ways to counter this as we'll talk about later in the video so with running two of course being a high you want to have some really good mix up to mix it up with the mids right so alisa has running three four this is a mid mid minus seven on block 
and it's safe as well so you have a mix up between this move and the high it does some pretty chunky damage as well it gives you 35 so an opponent ducks they are definitely going to feel it so this is like the b and b at least a mix up between running two and running three four but just like running two Running 3 can also be floated by jabs. This is one weakness that Alisa has for most of her moves and you will see it occurring a lot in this video as we talk about more of her tools. Like the one jab can float Alisa out of so much stuff and this is this also happens with running 3 plus 4. So running 2, running 3 plus 4, you must always be on the lookout for not just the jabs, of course they die for the running 2, the sidestep, because both these moves can be stepped, right? A good read and they both can be sidestepped, so you're looking for the side step you're looking for the one jab and you're also looking for the opponent trying to duck to cover this weakness up the weakness of being floated you can use forward forward for one which is a mid as well it's also safe on block at minus nine however it can actually be more linear depending on the range at which you do this move you do it very close you always be minus nine if you do it at max range or somewhere mid range you end up being minus five to minus four even as low as minus two sometimes like at the tip range it's very strong but it's a bit slower and it's as linear it's also as linear as running three plus four so the only difference is this one cannot be floated unlike the two so if you want to mix it up you can throw in a forward forward four as well it all depends on you it all depends on the reads you're making against your opponent is your opponent checking you regularly with one jabs or throwing out jabs at that range then okay start mixing it up with a forward forward four mind your running twos and dash up down threes as well is pretty good to counter those jabs so as i was saying earlier the most important thing with running two is to not be too predictable with this move you're going to get yourself killed and with alisa it's very difficult to make a comeback with this character it's one of her glaring weaknesses if you don't use this move in a smart sense you always find yourself getting launched and getting punished you have to be very very careful my biggest advice is use this move at close range point blank range if you can learn to do the instant while running too instantly in your opponent's face and not at a distance because there's a very low chance that your opponent knows it's coming from point blank range all the tools we've talked about right like a one jab into a running two can be very good you can do like a back one if they're respecting you into a running two forward two or running two down forward one or running two back three of course that pushback it has if they don't press buttons can go into the running two those can be too predictable of course you have to be very careful standing four as well the pushback or running two now we spoke about down one plus two hello you can do that because you're plus five they won't really press buttons most of the time so surprise them with an instant or running two boom get that plus five down back three into running two there's some ideas like that don't be too predictable with the running tools guys you will get yourself killed but overall a very strong tool just like produce running two it's so difficult to deal with alisa bro like close range is strong max range is strong as well with running tools running three plus fours even half flight mix-ups as we we'll talk about so yeah a very difficult character to deal with at almost all ranges she has plus frames she has movement she has a good side step she has great lows like alisa is a very strong character top tier for sure so running to guys implement it in your game plan so that brings us to her flight stance her quintessential mix-up too i've spoken about how alisa is a poke heavy character but if you want to go for mix-ups then flight stance will be that tool for you we also spoke about how she's good at max range or like range 2 range 2.5 and again it's because of moves like running 2 running 3 plus 4 forward forward four and flight flight covers so much space and there are some tools to talk about from this stance that you will focus on mainly for your mix-up tools so we have flight one two which is like basically jabs from flight this is safe the jabs are minus nine but you won't really use this as much as flight two so flight two is a huge ass elbow this is minus eight on block and just like forward forward four the further you are from your opponent actually the more lenient it is in terms of frame data so at close range you always be minus eight but if you space it correctly you can get like minus two minus four minus five so get a flight two then still move afterwards if you space it correctly like it's so strong and like i said you guys you keep on seeing this trend with alisa's good frame data all around very good frame data. this like knocks down does a huge chunk so very very strong and then you have flight three 
which is the law from this stance and this is why this stance will be a mix-up stance because the law is amazing it's actually a counter hit launcher which is very strong it is minus 14 on blanc at point blank range however so be very careful against opponents with 14 frame launchers like raven and Jin. you can't just throw it out willy-nilly at close range but again just like flight 2 you space it correctly you can actually make this law safe guys you can make it safe if you do it at max range like at tip range which is strong again so this stance is all about spacing and they're encouraging you to do it at max range because it's actually risky doing it at point blank range because again just like running two just like running three four it can also be floated by jabs at close range so the best scenario you want to use this move is max range and mostly after your opponent has been knocked down so as an oki zeme option let's say you get a launcher boom boom you do a screw then you do like a float setup right in this case alisa's two three three is a very good float setup so you can do that and spike them then go for an okizeme setup with half light mix up so that's the idea behind these two also in some scenarios where like super plus we're talking about like four on hit gives you plus 14 you know back for back to four again super plus as well so in scenarios where you think your opponent will respect you or won't mash buttons against you you can implement a flight mix up really quickly that's the idea if not the opponent mashes most likely they mash jabs they'll float you out of the flight then get a full combo off of it so you have to be very very careful at using this stance at point blank range again it's about reads guys reads 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 is the name of the game when it comes to tekken also have flight three one plus two which is a high actually but it is an unblockable so it's very scary in that sense but this one will be used mostly for the war right because you can actually get a war splat but you can actually just do it mid-screen if you want it will leave you at plus eight in chainsaw stance which is always very strong but i think it's more effective at the wall you're better off going for like flight three or flight two mix-up so a flight stance guys very very strong you want to go for mix-ups use the flight for okizeme options as a mix-up stance at point blank range you can be floated just like running two running three plus four so you must be careful in that sense now when alisa is in stance the properties of her flight become different of course she has her chainsaws out so obviously everything becomes different or at least most of the stuff so for example her, her flight one becomes this like super plus chainsaw on block it's actually plus nine on block which is insane however it is a high it can be dug so you have to be risky then her flight one plus two becomes like super dive where she like covers so much space and just dives in with the chainsaws this does so much diving and covers so much range like so much space it's so strong it's zero on block as well so you can still move afterwards you can still use her sidestep from chainsaw you can still use a command sidestep from chainsaw stance as well so very very strong however she does still keep her flight three which is the law and i didn't talk that much about this law on hit firstly it's plus four on it leaves you crouching as well and a crouching alisa of course is still strong we spoke about a full crouch mix up between outstanding one plus two and full crouch down one plus two so you can go for flight three into the full crouch mix up if you're disrespecting your mix up you can go for outstanding one or outstanding four as a frame trap after flight three if, if you do it at max range like we spoke about earlier you will push them away and you won't be able to take advantage of those plus frames so you have to decide whether you want to do it from max range or do it close range to utilize those plus frames that's kind of like the loop or the take and win you take something you lose something kind of thing going on with alisa's chainsaw three but in this stance right i'll call this her chainsaw flight because her normal flight she doesn't have her chainsaws out but for this one you have to have the chainsaws out for you to access this particular flight you won't find yourself using this flight that much because it's not that easy to get your chainsaws out and then use her chainsaw flight as well you have to do like so much to get this scenario and this mostly goes into her hit which i'll cover as well in the video so stay tuned and the best thing about this stance is the health which actually has a healthy from chainsaw stance so chainsaw flight into forward to one plus two is her chainsaw hell sweep and that's why this thing is so strong and they made it a very huge part of her hit mechanic having instant access to this could have been like so ridiculously strong because again it's used to cover like so much space and so much range and that's the only scenario in which you find yourself using this hail sweep not close range because at close range again you have find yourself at risk of getting jabbed and floated or out of the air as i said earlier and just like a normal flight stance you find yourself accessing this chainsaw flight as an okay zemi optional after like a knockdown so let's say you get a punish from forward three two 
into back three plus four which is guaranteed you still be in chainsaw stance so you can then go into chainsaw flight after this let's say running two on hit into running two on hit you go into chainsaw stance then back one plus two for the guaranteed follow-up you still be in chainsaw stance from chainsaw stance you now go for chainsaw flight mix-ups that's the idea basic one on one basically flight but with chainsaws very very strong okay so finally let's break down alisa's chainsaw stance the best stance in the game Game when it comes to offense like this stance is downright broken so for starters as i've been talking about in the video throughout alisa has basic movement in the stance she can back dash she has a forward dash she has a command back dash with back three plus four she has her chainsaw stance flight with forward three plus four she has a manual side step with down or up three plus four as well so movement all my days does she have movement as well in the stance she can also block in the stance as well so don't have to worry about getting launched by going into chainsaw stance by mistake she is still very much safe as well chainsaw stance forward one this is basically the jab of alisa's chainsaw stance it's plus three on block which is very strong as well and plus nine on hit guys plus nine you don't want to get hit with this thing it also has a very active hitbox so sometimes even if the opponent ducks it if they are very late or they delay by a slightest they can still get clipped by the last hit it is annoying like that and it's just very very annoying to deal with so she also has her chainsaw one which is like her big damage move basically telling the opponent not to duck i touched upon this earlier it's only minus nine on block so after this you can't really move you have to just stay blocking but it forces your opponent not to duck because it actually knocks them down for a guaranteed forward three plus four one plus two which is a chainsaw stance flight one plus two the big dive as well so very very strong she has her chainsaw two which is a safe launcher as well minus nine on block and it goes under highs i don't know why but it just goes under highs so now even jabbing is a very bad option for your opponent because she does have this move you jab by mistake and getting your ass launched right they have to be very very careful we touched upon down one as well down one is plus four on hit only minus 12 on block as well and after chainsaw down one you have chainsaw one chainsaw stance one which is a guaranteed frame trap as well and this is the big reason as why they want mash buttons after chainsaw down one guys it is so painful getting hit by chainsaw stance one people just want mash buttons but side stepping as well is a good option for the opponent so you should be using your chainsaw forward one as I touched upon earlier, it has very pretty decent tracking and it's very, very active, making it not very easy to sidestep. So chainsaw down one is a big law, something you're going to be using a lot with Alisa when in chainsaw stance. Like it's her go-to law because it keeps you in chainsaw stance as well. She does have another law, which is a chainsaw down two. Now it's also plus four on hit. However, it won't keep you in chainsaw stance. It does six more points of damage more than down one, but it takes you out of a chainsaw stance. So you have to choose whether you want to get out of stance or you want to have less damage but stay in chainsaw stance that's going to be up to you but in my advice i do like that chainsaw down one it's very chunky in the frame data keeping you in chainsaw stance guys you have that chainsaw one for the frame trap if they press buttons they get hit you also have that chainsaw forward one for tracking and chainsaw one plus two as well so these are the two go-to laws when alisa is in chainsaw stance it's also minus 14 on block as well more risky than his down one so keep that in mind so you guys see why this stance is very strong like just these tools on their own all oh my days it is so difficult to deal with there is no counterplay when it comes to alisa's chainsaw stance guys it's a complete guessing game she has plus frames she has a hill sweep she has very good lows very good frame data safe mids almost everything is safe active frames there is no counterplay and i always tell this to alisa means try by all means to stay as much as you can in chainsaw stance spam chainsaws as much as you can you have built in movement as well you can still block afterwards guys it is so strong so these are the most important tools that you are going to focus on when you are in her distraction stance forward one as a good poke for checking the opponent down one as your go-to low leaving you at plus four setting up the standing one or the chainsaw one as a frame trap you try to step you have forward one you have chainsaw one plus two you're trying to get out of chainsaw stance go for that down two does more damage than down one but takes you out of the stance big plus frame mid that you want you can go for like a chainsaw stance flight one if you 
one to change the start flight one plus two to keep the pressure going you can easily backdash get out of space with the command backdash and get back right in a very strong stance i can't like i can't i don't know how else i can express this guys this stance is downright busted please abuse the hell out of it as much as you can down back 3 is going to be your go to Alisa low poke. This is a 16 frame low that only does 11 damage on hit, is only minus 2 on hit, but is minus 13 on block, which is honestly a bit too much for what this low does. Not as good as it was back in Tekken 7, but one might argue that it's actually deserved, but I feel as though it's a little bit too much. You don't get anything on counter it either. It's just basically a low poke, right? Just go in, use it, and back out. Go in, use it, back out. Out. but what makes it very good is the ability to have insane space control so kind of think of down back three as the lower version of down forward four we covered down forward four earlier and how it's so strong at space control getting out and creating that space between you and the opponent so down back three kind of works in the same sense but the low version the further you are from the opponent the further the further space that you have when you do a down back three so if you do it at tip range you still have a lot of space between you and the opponent even at close range you can still move afterwards because it is only minus two as i said earlier getting your offense going after down back three comes down to reads again right because if you do down back three which leaves you crouching by the way guys remember it leaves you crouching if you do down back three into outstanding four you will lose to jabs you will lose to a down forward one however if you do down back three into sidestep you will beat their jabs and you will beat their down forward one as well so you have these minus games going on you do down back three now the opponent try to, tries to cut you with the homing move let's say you do down back three and the alisa player throws out a standing four to cut you sidestepping right so you do down back three into all standing four you actually beat them instead and beat their standing four so again it's all about reads mind games and what the opponent does after you do that down back three and we talked about spacing earlier you want to space this and create with opportunities for yourself just like down forward four at tip range you still have a lot of space between you and the opponent after throwing out this move sometimes the opponent will intuitively just throw something random after down back three maybe like a down forward to check you right but at tip range of course you've created that space between you boom back dash get the forward three two if punish get the hop kick get the jab punish again that's the idea we spoke about the full crouch mix up again and down back three is one of those moves that leaves you in a crouching status so if the opponent tends to respect you a lot after down back three that gives you the free leeway to go in for the full crouch mix so down back three into full crouch down one plus two to go for the low or down back three into after one plus two to go for the mid mix up that's the idea if you don't want to go into full crouch mix ups you can go for you know other pressure tools like running two of the down back three four four three four you know cancel back three cancel four and stuff like that again it's all about reads just a go to low pole that you use to study your opponent just as you would a down forward four or a down forward one however keep in mind again it is minus 13 that minus 13 does hurt especially against characters with very strong 13 frame punishers like dragonov you know law you have to be very very mindful of those characters use it sparingly and then you have her down four, which is going to be the safer version of Alisa's go to low poke, but comes at the expense of not being able to go under jabs or highs like down back three. This is less risky at only minus 12 on block. Remember, down back three is minus 13 on block, so it's kind of a trade off. The whole string, though, down four, one plus two is zero on block and it does gel, meaning if the first hit lands, they have to eat the last hit as well, despite it being a high however if they do commit duck and you do down for one plus two they can duck the last hit and launch your ass for it so it does come with its risks if you decide to commit to the string so you have kind of have to mix it up between the whole string and just throwing out the downfall on its own kind of like buffering it sometimes they'll block it and they won't even punish it because they're waiting for the last hit to come out it's only minus one on hit as well so it's it's not that great you don't really get plus frames from this but of course being alisa you get to implement your movement and your reads as well as i talked about earlier everything i've said about back one down forward one forward two down back three 
applies to downfall as well. It's all about reads, what they do after your downfall on hit. Are they jabbing afterwards, downfall warning you afterwards, sidestep them. Okay, they're respecting you, keep go your pressure going. That's generally how Alisa works. It's all about reads with this character. You don't get that much plus frames. That's a trade-off that comes with being a movement heavy character. But overall, a very good low poke and a good alternative to her down back three. Next up is Alisa's down three, which again is one of the best laws in the game. This law is downright amazing. So firstly, the range. The range is ridiculous. This covers almost half screen. Half screen. So basically the range you've talked about that Alisa is very good at, the flight range, the running two range, the running three range, now even down three covers that range as well. So this is plus eight on hit and is a counter hit launcher as well. However, it's a bit risky because at close range, it is launch punishable. And yes, I do say at close range because just like most of Alisa's tools that we've covered previously, how risky this law is depends on how close you are to the opponent. At max range and tip range, it can actually be safe. It can be safe, guys, which is just insane. And if it lands further away, it can also be more plus. I did say it's plus 8 on hit, but depending on how far you are, it can go to as high as plus 15 on hit, guys. Like, spacing is just key with Alisa, guys. It has, like, the archetype. It just fits into her playstyle. It fits into her archetype. She wants to be creating space all the damn time. She wants to be moving. And this is how down 3 works. Just like running 2, just like running 3, 4, at close range, a jab can float her out of down three. They are encouraging you not to use this at close range because you can be floated and you can be punished. So you want to use this at tip max range. But however, again, at tip max range, it's very predictable because the opponent expects you to come with either a running two or a down three. That's kind of like the one or one when it comes to Alisa matchup knowledge. At max range, either an Alisa player is coming with either one of those two moves. So you want to be unpredictable with her as much as possible, which which means using down three at close range most of the times but that comes at the risk of being launch punishable so again guys you see why i say the riskiness of this law depends on just how you use it it depends on reads like alisa is a read heavy character yes she does have some bullshit especially in chainsaw stance but outside of that she relies mostly on reads to get the most out of her tools and down three just happens to be one of those tools down three forces you into this stance i don't remember what this stance is called but i'll just call this a crouching stance right she goes through this first crouching stance and she does have some tools from this so she has crouching stance one which is a high it's safe but can be ducked very risky and she has a four as well which is a safe mid launcher so this is going to be your basic 101 frame trap down three into crouching stance four right even crouching stance one is a frame trap but this is if they don't duck because it is a high like i said it can be ducked and remember i did say if you space this move correctly you can get as much as plus 15. So if you manage to get that plus 15, the crouching stance one is actually guaranteed guys, guaranteed on hit, which is insane. But this again makes it risky because if you don't get the right spacing and go for down three into crouching stance one, the opponent will instinctively duck because they know about this and you will get launched. So as much as, as strong as this is, if you just get it wrong by an inch, you are getting punished if you commit to that one you are getting punished so for that fact you have to at least throw out some crouch stance force as well to mix it up as a frame trap again this is a safe mid launcher so there's no reason not to use it as well if the opponent starts respecting you after down three on hit you can always cancel it by holding down to go into full crouch so down three hold down go into full crouch and go for your full crouch mix up what's in one two or full crouch down one plus two the versatility of this law is pretty good like this law is amazing and just it just ties alisa's skit together guys use a down threes but again don't be too predictable it's all about mix-ups at close range it's very effective at close range however it can be floated by jabs and at max range people expect you to use it all the damn time so it's not that easy to use as strong as it is you have to be smart around how you use this law 
And finally, let's talk about how Alisa's hit mechanic works, how her gimmick works, what is she all about whilst in hit. There are two aspects to how Alisa's hit mechanic works. The first one is Alisa deals massive amounts of chip damage in her chainsaw stance whilst in hit. She's basically one of, if not the best character in the game when it comes to chip damage. She's up there with Leroy, Raven, Nina, you name it. She might be the best actually because man, Chainsaw Stance is a very strong stance. Like I said, she has plus frames in this, she has movement in this. She can keep the pressure going so much in this stance. Adding extra chip damage as, as a bonus for this stance, oh my days guys, it is so strong. So as easy as that, whilst in Chainsaw Stance guys, Try by all means to stay in the stance and dish out as much chip damage as possible, guys. It is amazing. Very, very strong. The second aspect of Alisa's hit mechanic is the fact that she gains instant access to her chains of flight stance whilst in hit so earlier we spoke about how chains of flight can only be accessed when you have your chainsaws out from the neutral you can't just go directly into chains of flight you first have to have your chainsaws out but in hit alisa gains instant access to this so whilst in hit you can press forward one plus four to instantly go into chains of flight whilst in hit but this is not that strong i'm sure you've noticed not many alisa players actually use this because it takes up a huge ass chunk of our hit gauge it takes just so much so i don't think it's actually worth using that much you're better off going for as much chip damage as you possibly can whilst in hit but this does give you that instant access to that hail sweep so maybe you're running out of hit you're at max range right you can just go in for hail mary and go for that last hail sweep mix up but again not worth it try by all means to go for your chip damage as well that's basically it a very easy hit mechanic to explain very simple yet very effective so there you have it guys, a complete Alisa guide revolving around her most important tools. Now I will make different guides for punishment, for combo guides and stuff like that. So if you do love Alisa, please subscribe because I will make lots of content for her going forward. If you enjoyed my video, please like, subscribe and check out my other content as well. Constructive criticism is welcome. Please let me know what I would do better for your experience in terms of my guide. So thank you so much guys. Take care and GG.